And with that, the 2023 season is over. What was the best thing to happen this year in space and astronomy? What were my personal highlights and what's to come? There is so much to get through, so let's begin. Number five, Chandrayaan-3. In August, India made a spectacular entry into an exclusive club by becoming the fourth country to successfully land on the moon. The Vikram lander and its accompanying rover marked a significant milestone for India's space program. This achievement not only showcased India's growing power in space, but also opened up new avenues for lunar exploration and research. Number four, Cyrus Rex returns. September brought us an interstellar package from asteroid Bennu, courtesy of NASA's Cyrus Rex mission. This spacecraft journeyed millions of miles to collect samples from Bennu and returned to Earth with them via parachute. The samples are a time capsule from early solar system, holding clues about the building blocks of life and the origins of our cosmic neighborhood. They had a little hiccup trying to get the lid off the capsule, but the sample is now in labs all over the globe working on the analysis. Number three is the GRISM launch. With the retirement of the Suzaku Observatory in 2015 and the gradual aging of Chandra and XMM Newton, X-ray astronomy has faced a significant gap. The unfortunate loss of the Hitomi Observatory added to this void. However, the successful launch of GRISM X-ray Imaging and Spectroscopy mission breathed new life into X-ray astronomy, promising to bridge the gap until the anticipated launch of Athena in 2035. GRISM is set to unravel the mysteries of the hot and energetic universe, from the dynamics of cosmic plasmas to the behavior of black holes. Number two is the JUICE launch. The European Space Agency's JUICE mission took to the skies embarking on a journey to explore the ice-covered moons of Jupiter. These moons, Ganymede, Callisto and Europa, are intriguing worlds, potentially harboring subsurface oceans. JUICE's mission is to study their atmospheres, surfaces and internal structures, potentially shedding light on the habitability of these distant moons and whether or not they harbour life. It also marked the last science mission to be flown on an Ariane 5 rocket before its retirement. And then lastly, of course, my favorite number one is the Euclid launch and first images. The launch of the Euclid Space Telescope was of course my personal highlight, having worked on the mission myself. This advanced observatory is on a quest to map the geometry of the dark universe. Its first images, a kaleidoscope of distant galaxies, left us in awe of the universe's vastness. Euclid's mission to unravel the mysteries of dark matter and dark energy is a significant step towards understanding the evolution of our cosmos and our place in it. Now for my personal journey this year, where do I start? There were so many things. I started a new collaboration with Pharmacy on studying muscle atrophy of worms in space. It involves working with a superconducting magnet 18 times the magnetic field strength of a typical MRI machine. This year I made tenure, which is a pretty massive deal to me. Anyone in academia knows how hard these positions are to come by. And this is because it pretty much requires a professor to retire. But we all know that professors never retire or even die. I swear some of our staff are over 100 years old. I made a returning debut to Ratio in Sofia, Bulgaria after five years. For those that don't know, Ratio organizes popular science events. They can be as massive as a thousand attendees. The events are entirely organized by volunteers and the trip also tied in with a podcast and endless Bulgarian media appearances. I did my fair share of TV and radio in 2023 too, even getting to be in the GB News studios in person for a change. I moved office, no longer getting distracted by the wildlife of rabbits and birds is probably a good thing. And we can't forget that the Oppenheimer movie came out. I of course had to break the stereotype to go and see Barbie, but Oppenheimer wasn't bad either. In November, I was invited to Tucson, Arizona to give a talk on AI taking over astronomy. 
It was a great excuse to hang out with a load of old friends, hiking and swimming and drinking. But I did some pretty awesome things too, including touring the Sophia Infrared Observatory, essentially a flying telescope. The night ended with a dinner at the Pima Air Museum after hours with a talk from the deputy PI of Osiris Rex and a mariachi band. I took a detour to the large binocular telescope whilst out there. Honestly, as an astronomer, I've never seen anything like this. And I was so lucky to even get the opportunity of this detailed tour from my friend Kai. Kai used to work on the instruments. We also snuck into the Vatican telescope, which reminds me that I should do a video on that for the, all of those conspiracy theorists at some point. And in Tucson, I also got to go to a real nuclear bunker. The Titan II missile itself is pretty impressive. And being in the bunkers was completely surreal. But the fact that they repurposed this rocket for the Gemini project that took astronauts to space made it even more special. And last but not least, my trip back to the European Space Agency, first time in four years since leaving. It was of course a highlight for me. Being invited back to talk about AI in galaxy science and to be on an AI discussion panel made me feel so special, as I've always been made to feel whilst working at ESAC. The people there are just the best. They've always made me feel right at home. And I even got a short meeting with the new science director, Carol Mundell. And to 2024, well, honestly, there's so much. It seems like everyone's launching some kind of rocket in 2024. It's definitely getting crowded up there in space. But there are a few highlights that stuck out to me. And I think you should look out for too. Number seven is Ariane 6. Will it finally launch? I feel like we've been waiting for this one forever. But when it does launch, it's going to be spectacular, making a new era in European space endeavors. Number six is Doggy One. Yeah, you heard that right. The Doggy Coin founder is sending a mission to space entirely funded via crypto. Doggy Coin is literally shooting for the moon. Number five is 2024 total solar eclipse. Mark your calendars for April 8th, 2024. And if you're in the right place in the US, you're gonna be in for an astronomical treat, a total solar eclipse. For the rest of the US, you'll still be graced by a partial solar eclipse. And I'm only slightly jealous about that. <laughs> Number four is NASA's Artemis II mission. This one's huge. For the first time since the Apollo era, NASA is planning a crewed lunar mission. Artemis II is set for late 2024 and potentially it will take astronauts on a flyby around the moon. This 10 day mission is not just a trip around the moon, but it's a critical step towards future lunar landings, including Artemis III's goal of landing the first woman and the next man on the lunar surface. It's a giant leap in our return to lunar exploration. Number three, Chinese Chang'e 6 mission, also planned for 2024, this Chinese lunar sample return mission aims to be the first to collect samples from the far side of the moon, an area still shrouded in mystery. Your interests on the dark side of the moon. Number two is JAXA's Martian Moon Explorer mission, MMX. Japan has yet to land successfully on the moon, but in 2024, they're attempting to make it to the red planet. Odds will be even worse. Do they think they'll make it? The mission includes landing on Phobos and returning surface samples to Earth in 2029. NASA's Europa Clipper mission is set for an October 2024 launch, and this mission is destined for one of the most intriguing places in our solar system, Jupiter's moon Europa. With its subsurface ocean, Europa is a top candidate for the search of extraterrestrial life. Anyway, that's all for this week's video. Let me know what your highlights of the year are. Thank you so much to my YouTube Perk subscribers for supporting. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to leave me a like, share and subscribe and happy new year everyone.